Hello, and this is episode two. If you're not looking at this screen, you're not on the right episode. So I actually deleted a little bit from the standard assets. The big thing in here wasn't actually the skyboxes, which only weigh in at about two megs. It was the third party, the third person character controller, which was actually like a, a character, like a Team Fortress 2 style character. And that was weighing in at four megs or so, so I just deleted him. We don't need him. All right, with that in mind, what we need to do is we need to create this directory called scripts, which I forgot to delete because this is the second take. Uh, I created a directory like, like this, and I called it scripts. We need to create a new C Sharp script. We're going to call this one World. And we're going to drag it onto, and we have a lot of choices as to where we can put it, but we're going to put it on the main camera. Okay? We also need to create a script, which we're going to call Chunk. Now, a chunk is a block of world. And if you've ever gone through Minecraft and you'd, if you've seen those square blocks of land pop into existence, that's a chunk. Come on. And we're going to put that on our square block of land. Chunk, like so. Open these up in our editor of choice. So here in world, that's chunk. This is world. We need to add a couple of, of things to it. This is going to be what, what manages our world. And it's going to be what we pass from player to player or what, we, what, what keeps continuous from chunk to chunk. So we're going to need a couple of things here. We're going to need a, a chunk width, chunk height, and a seed. This seed value uh, is only going to be used later, but we might as well put it in now. And the seed is the world seed, which you may have specified once or twice if you've started up Minecraft and fussed around with adding in a seed of your choice. It's what keeps the land chunks the same no matter how many times you load the world. So uh, here in start we're gonna go ahead and say if seed equals zero then make seed equal to a random number. So that will give our seed value some random value so it's different every time we load it. Okay? It's not gonna be useful until next time though. So here in chunk this is going to be a set of a, a piece of land now each block, uh, each brick in the chunk is one of those little Minecraft bricks you're used to. Ours are going to be slightly smaller than Minecraft bricks, but that's okay. So those are normally represented by bytes. That's a number between 0 and 255. That only gives you room for 255 different kinds of brick. So if you have more than that, you've got to do some kind of, of uh, you know, byte, no, byte 255 is actually referencing something else or whatever. Or you can change it to be ints, whatever you'd like. But we're going to use bytes. We don't need that many. So we actually need this to be a three-dimensional array. Like that. Um, you can also make it a one-dimensional array. Uh, which we could do. We might. But this will work for now. Oh wait, we don't have to make new there. Alright. Uh, so here in start, what we need to do is we need to set that map equal to stuff. So map equals new byte and then we need to specify a width and a height so world uh, we need to be able to find this this world class well in order to, we, we this is where it is so we need to have this stuff right let's go ahead and just make it so that there is a public static uh, world current world and we're also going to go ahead and put a public static chunk width I don't know whether uh, or rather int I don't know whether they're allowed to have the exact same name. I don't think they are. So um, we're just going to call this. Let's just leave it like that. We can use the current world. All right. So when we boot up in start, we set current world equal to this. But that reminds me, we're actually not going to use start. Start happens very late in the in the boot up process. It actually happens after a variety of other functions. So we're going to go ahead and use some of the other functions. One of our choices is we can use main. Uh, main happens just before start. Another option is we can use awake. Awake happens, as far as I know, first. So that means that the world, this part, will get run before anyone else gets to go. 
Uh, so that means it will have a seed defined and a current world ready to rock the instant that this boots up. And that means that over here in Chunk, when we hit start, we know that the world is already set up. The world already knows its seed value and has already set itself to be global. This current world dot world dot current world dot width world dot current world dot width and world dot current world dot height. Now we're going to run into a lot of problems later on with me forgetting which uh, axis is z and which axis is y because Unity has them backwards. But that we'll, we'll deal with that when it comes up. So we've got this map. We need to actually go ahead and use it. So we're going to set it up so that it has some values in it. Now here is the first time that that yz axis thing pops up. Do we want our y axis to be vertical or deep? If we go with vertical, then we'll always have to remember to keep it that way. If we go with deep, uh, either way, there's it, it's against the grain. It doesn't work for me. So we're actually going to go ahead and... Last time I did it so that I had to remember that Y and Z were flipped. This time I'm going to make it so that Y is unity Y. Okay? So this needs to be Z. And we're going to say that map X... 0, Z equals 1. And that will give us a nice flat surface. We're also going to go ahead and make, make X 1, Z equal to a random value between 0 and 1. So that means it'll be either 0 or 1. So we'll get like a spotty surface. Now, how can we test this? Well, it's public. So when we hit play, cannot cast from int to byte. Of course not. The range of 0 to 1 is very hard to cast to a number between 0 and 255. You have to cast this into a byte because uh, Unity thinks, that, or C, C Sharp thinks that it is an integer. By the way, I'm working in C Sharp and I plan to keep working in C Sharp. If you're addicted to JavaScript, um, all this stuff is pretty easy to translate, but you'll have to do it on your own. Uh, later on, I'll be doing some pretty heavy hitting stuff using generics, and you won't be able to do that in JavaScript very easily at all. So if we hit pause, and we walk on over to our brick, and we take a look at the chunk script. Oh, it doesn't actually tell us. It doesn't know how to represent this. Um, I'm not sure why that is. It must not know how to represent a three-dimensional array. Yeah, that's probably it. Take my word for it, it's working. <laughs> so the next step we need to actually do is we need to make it so that this is a mesh that we can uh, render. So first thing we need to do is we need to stop stretching. Uh, stretching a, a stretching here in the scale is a bad idea because it stretches the mesh and that makes all of your mesh coordinates go crazy. So we're going to go ahead and not do that. Our first person controller should be directly over our block. And now we need to have it so that there's a mesh. So public mesh, active mesh, uh, public mesh visual mesh and then we also need to have public mesh renderer mesh renderer and public mesh collider mesh collider and these are going to be handy shortcuts for us later mesh renderer equals get component mesh renderer and mesh collider equals get component mesh collider now, we're going to go ahead and make those required, and that way we'll never forget. If we ever put it on a brick where there's no mesh uh, renderer or mesh filter or mesh uh, collider, it will actually go, hey, wait, what are you doing? Uh, uh, mesh collider. And actually, we also need a mesh filter, so... Yeah, put it at the end of the file. So the reason we need all of these things is because Unity doesn't have any kind of combined um, object that does all of these things. They are different objects. So to show you what these are, here in the box that we created, the, the default box that you create has all of these things attached to it. 
The mesh filter contains the mesh object, which we're actually going to be overwriting, so we don't care what it is. This is a box collider. That's not correct. So we need to remove this box collider because we require a mesh collider. Add physics mesh collider. So there's the mesh collider. And here's the mesh renderer. The mesh renderer is important because that's going to have our materials. The mesh collider is important because we need to be able to walk on things. And the mesh filter is important because we need it to look right. And of course the chunk. So we could actually manually set these if we want, but since they're set automatically, there's no need to. There's actually no need to even make them public. We can make them protected, and that'll make it a little bit neater uh, to look at. We don't need to. Uh, we don't need to have those three things in our uh, in our list. So when we want to create a mesh, that's easy enough. Let's go ahead and go into a new function, public. Let's go ahead and make this a virtual function so that we can override it later. Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking ahead here. So we want to set our visual mesh equals new mesh. Oh, uh, void. So a mesh is simply a list of vertexes and ways that they're connected and where they are on your UV map. So when we create it, we need to create a list of vertexes. Fortunately, we have a really easy job because all of our vertexes are currently on integer values. Uh, every brick is exactly one unit wide, as you might remember. So we can just say blah, blah, and then we would need to include y as well. We're only going to get part way through this this episode. It's a little bit too much to do in one episode. All right, so what we have is we have, we're going through all of these blocks, but we need to have a couple of things that we can write to. We need to have a list of, oh, speaking of which, in order to use lists, you need to add a new using directive, generic. We need to have, oh, there's no public. We need to have a list of vector threes. We're also going to need a list of vector twos. And we're also going to need a list of ints. Down at the end, what we need to do is we need to set them. So visual mesh dot verts, uh, vertices, dot vertexes equals verts dot two array. Visual mesh dot uv equals uv dot two array, and visual mesh dot triangles equals tries dot two array. And then we need to visual mesh dot recalculate bounds and visual mesh dot recalculate normals. And then we need to make sure to set our mesh filter to use it. Like so. Uh, we can also set our mesh collider to use it. But the first thing we need to do when we're doing this is we need to set the shared mesh equal to null to tell it that it needs to recalculate, and then we need to set the visual mesh. Actually, we don't need to do that because the visual mesh is a new mesh. That's fine. So this should work fine. So all of this should work, except, of course, we're missing all of the actual logic. Well, let's go ahead and see what this does. Duh, I did all that modification when it was in, uh, it was in the wrong mode. Yeah, I made all of those changes in play mode. <sighs> Gotta make them all again. Unstretch everything. Put the camera, put the first person on the top. All right. All right, so we have a mesh, but it's not actually doing anything. Oh, you know why? Because we forgot to call that function. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, now it's gone. It's gone! It's actually um, above our character because we're falling now. Uh, we, uh, we can't tell that we're falling because the, the, the sky map doesn't care. The, uh, the sky doesn't care. 
and the box is invisible, so he can't see it. So he can't tell we're falling, but we're falling. And the cube has gone to being invisible. Zero verts, zero tries. So that's going to be, next time, we're going to build all of the faces that we're going to need. And I'm going to go into some detail about kinds of options that we've got for that. Next episode might be kind of long.